we've had four burgers for four days in a row. Lost all of your very down ten mine in us, yeah. Welcome to a new episode of Lost in Transit. We are Tom and Isabel. For the last seven months, we've been travelling around in our self-converted Ford Transit. We're now back in Cornwall as we prepare for a summer of European travels. We have driven down west. We're in West Penwith. And that is the very, very tip of Cornwall. We don't come down here much, really, because it's about a couple of hours from where um, we're normally based in Cornwall. But it's really nice to be down here. It's been very wild mm. and rugged. We are just approaching an engine house. They are very iconic and they're a symbol of Cornwall. These houses would have held the steam engines that pumped water out from the mines deep underground. Behind me here is the Khan Galva tin mine. So this was operating on and off in the 1830s right up till 1878. It would have really transformed this coastal quiet area into a hustling and bustling industrial area. So the mining is very symbolic to the people of Cornwall. The black with the white cross even comes from the black of the tin ore and the white cross is the liquid tin pouring out. My sister and her boyfriend also have a van so we've decided to convoy down to the far west to do a little van tour. Yeah, this is where uh, we sleep, all the magic happens. This is the fairy lights. This is Gladstone's bed, out of wonk. Um, here's my rucksack, here's the food. Um, and that's it, that's all I got. We just passed the house, the old farmhouse where Tom used to stay as a National Trust Ranger. So the whole area is covered in ruins from the mining and this whole area has been granted UNESCO World Heritage and is protected. So you can see these engine houses right out on the cliffs. It's amazing to think how they would have built these. Uh, the most advanced technology they had at the time was steam, steam power. There are tunnels, there are mine shafts that go deep underground, deep, like really deep, hundreds of metres underground. And they would go under the sea floor and out to sea and there are apparently mines that go out up to three miles out to sea under the sea floor and there are reports of the miners getting scared as they heard big storms raging in the sea above and boulders being rolling along the sea floor and they would hear it echoing around the, the mines they were in. Here there is a little bit of a leftover mine which is open and we can have a little bit of an experience of what it might have been like just to dip our heads into a mine. Tom's going to put in a little clip for me, if we can find it, of the mapping of where the mines go under um, Cornwall. They go under all different parts of Cornwall. They go really deep and they're almost like root systems. So even when there's signs of mine shafts, even if you can't see one, beware. I would absolutely love to have flown the drone and get some cool aerial shots for you guys, but it's so windy and that is the thing down west, you have the full force of the Atlantic coming in, uh, and it's always pretty windy. So we've driven another few hundred metres down some wiggly, windy roads and we've arrived into St Just. Gabs' boyfriend Paddy is a bit of a superstar surfer and he wants to get in the water, so um, we might go find him at the beach where he can get in. There we, go. we had a really nice breakfast and we've left all of them guys. They're all working in uh, the cafe still, but me and Paddy are going for a little walk around St Just. So in the middle of St Just, there is this big green circle and it's known as the Plenanguari and a Plenanguari is like a medieval amphitheatre except it's like inverted so the audience are in the middle and the play happens 360 degrees around them. So in the middle of the Plenanguari there's some rocks and they've all got loads of holes in. These holes are actually from where the miners would have been having competitions like a sports day sort of thing um, and they would have seen who could drill a hole the fastest, who could split a rock, that sort of thing. Those guys finished up doing their work they needed to do in the cafe and we've come just out the other side of St Just and there's a nice beach.
We had so much fun on the beach. The sun was out, the sea was crystal clear. Paddy had the waves to himself. I had to go body surfing and Gladstone messed around in the rock pools. Great waves out there, it was really fun to watch. We have been here about four hours and we're going to head along to one of the best campsites ever. We've got to Treen campsite. It is actually way quieter than we thought. This time of year, um, Cornwall's normally a lot busier. Uh, it appears no one's here. We're having a little burger for dinner on Treen campsite. It's a delight. We've had four burgers for four days in a row and I ain't stopping here. I wanna see a smile on your face So really nice stay here at Treen Campsite. Um, a bit more expensive than I remember. It's quite pricey nowadays, but um, a lovely, like an amazing location. If you do come, make sure you head down to the cliffs, see the beaches and stuff. So we've driven away from Treen and we've come to Falmouth. Woo! And while here, we're meeting up with Alice. Alice is a jeweler. She works with metal. So seeing as this is our mining episode, we thought it would be appropriate to come and do some metal work with Alice. So Alice makes all sorts of amazing jewelry. You can check it out on her Instagram. Um, but she also used to do a range where it was very much based on the landscape. So this ring is the Bralia ring. If I'm correct, Bralia is dented in Cornish. Kind of shaped it like the rugged kind of coast. And I textured it on the rocks at Kynance Cove. So we have come down Falmouth to make some Bralia rings using the landscape itself to create the texture. We have textured our rings to our desired amount and we're going to head back now to Alice's workshop and we're going to turn our strips of silver into fully fledged rings. Alice is going to take us through each of the stages of making the ring from the, the piece of silver that we've bashed. First step now with your rings is to anneal the metal again to make it nice and soft. And you want the silver to become like a cherry red. Now we're going to form the ring and literally just bend the silver around with your hands. Just trying to get it um, round because we're going to use the pliers to kind of bring it, bring the ends together. Pop the silver in my little pickle pot, which basically takes off the oxidization to make it nice and clean. 
Now we are ready to solder the rings together. Izzy and Tom have shaped their rings. They're in the pickle, cleaning up. So I'm gonna grab my flux, swirl it around to almost make like a creamy paste. Okay. This is gonna help the solder flow. So you're gonna paint this on a little bit of flux on the end of the brush. And then you're gonna paint over your join. Pop the solder on the bottom. And we're gonna gently heat up around the ring. Get the silver nice and hot, and then I'm gonna focus on the join and that solder's gonna come through. Oh. She says. <laughs> shape our rings on the mandrel and now we've got nice round rings and we've just been cleaning up where we soldered to, to make it nice and smooth. And this is a co polishing compound called Rouge. I'm going to apply lots of pressure. Lots of pressure. Woo! <laughs> That's really hot. And to the last stage now which is the barrel polisher. So we're going to pop the rings into here. It's been really fun, um, it's been really interesting learning all the different steps. I mean, obviously Alice does it about a million times better on her real rings, they all look fantastic, but it's amazing to see how much work goes into each little piece. And I can't believe we've made something as well, which I'm actually like, proud of, I'm pretty pleased with it, I think they're going to look great. Get a bin in the tumbler, oh. it gets all frothy, and we just pour it out. I can feel, I've got them both. Oh my god! Let's have a look. So we've finished making our rings with Alice and I think they look awesome. I'm so pleased with the end result. Let us know what you think in the comments. We have to go back to Bodmin now because tomorrow I'm off on an adventure without Isabel deep underground. For granite is the hardest stone, he cried. Granite is the hardest stone. It'll tear. We are without Isabel, but I've got a lovely replacement in Jake and Ricky, uh, who are my good friends from school. You might remember Jake from previous vlogs in Lost Island. Um, but we've come down west to get in a mine. We're going deep underground, we're going to be climbing over chasms, abseiling down cliffs, uh, and we're going to bring you along. When you look at this hillside, you're actually looking back 500 years wow. in time. We had signed up to take a tour of the mines with a company called Cornwall Underground Adventure. And our guide for the day was Ben, who was both knowledgeable and a good laugh. Yeah. Anyway, but folks, we're actually going to head inside now and actually explore this for real. Amazing. Cool. Oh. Ben told us that the earliest workings would have been near the surface. The rock appeared smooth here, as it had been excavated with hand tools. <laughs> Deeper in, the walls became rougher as gunpowder had been used to blast them and the distance disappeared into inky darkness. <laughs> I'd never been deep underground in a mine before, but here we found ourselves clinging to the rock face with bottomless chasms beneath us and darkness all around. Oh yeah. That's one of your very down ten mine in us, yeah. <laughs> It was a darkness like I'd never experienced before. 
when the light's off, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Lucifer, Lucifer, tia vu o lantern nev, a dread of certain power, tia vu exultius brave, hagis setius peruco, lemed miros in kinda, ortha vi pan red setia, rak da wot, la fine nevra, tia ra diskina, my fellas ezel. Determus of the Indra, I conclude this magata, the riddle in Dain Oma, a Thor has slain in Serbia, hath class G the Ophia, Rat Kalenwell and Rubus, a bit void in Naviscus, Dredos G hath Kawetha, Ifon, Ragos V. So going down a tin mine uh, is definitely something I've had on my bucket list. So it's, it was so much fun to go and do that. Uh, thanks for, to Ben for showing us around. Thanks to Ricky and Jake for coming down there with me. Um, that's all for this week, guys. So uh, also thank you to Alice for making us rings with us and Dallow who's let us use their music yet again. Uh, join us next week when we do our last little Cornwall update. And then after that, we'll be getting back in the van ready for our European adventures. Uh, everyone remembers Gav's from Dublin. She's Hello. doing a little yeah, snippet in Bristol. Barely. I, I only make the outro. Let's see if I get shoved in the outro again.